So what if I told you that this is a totally awesome pedal if you just follow a few simple rules on how to use it? Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett and today we are taking a look at the Boss DS1 Distortion. This is one of the most famous stomp boxes pretty much of all time. And as one that's really inexpensive, it's one that you see out there a lot, also gets a lot of hatred. A lot of people think this is just a cheap, bad sounding pedal, maybe there's one or two ways to use it, but for the most part it's kind of a throwaway pedal. Now, on the subject of how cheap it is, well, I got this used for $30, and you can frequently find them used, that's probably on the low end, but you can frequently find them used between like $30 and $50, that's a pretty reasonable range. So you're gonna see a lot of them out there kicking around. I think this is an awesome pedal, and it has a lot of use. This is a pedal that you can do a ton of different things with. I do think there are a few cardinal rules on how to use it, which we're gonna talk about. Now, the interesting thing is they're the same two cardinal rules that I would have for using a Tube Screamer and getting a great tone out of a Tube Screamer. The first rule is that you keep the tone back. Now. Obviously, this is going to vary depending on what your guitar is, depending on what your band situation is. And keep in mind that when you're listening to the tones I'm getting today, I am playing solo, although you did just hear it in a jam track. But I am just kind of here in my studio by myself. And when you get these tones, it's a little easier to turn the tone back. But a good rule is to only turn the tone up as much as you need it, as opposed to kind of thinking about it the other way around. It can get really raspy and kind of buzzy and, and not so pleasant sounding when you have the tone up, but as you've already heard with the tone back, it's not lacking for note fidelity. It just sounds really good and gives you that kind of hard clipping edginess to your tone in a way that doesn't make it sound muffled at all. Now the second rule, and I think the more important rule, and this is really true for just about any distortion or overdrive pedal or even fuzz, so bear with me because you might say this is kind of a cop-out rule, but the cardinal rule with this pedal, even though it's orange, it's not, it's not cardinal, the most important rule for this pedal is to make sure that it is giving you a bit of a volume boost. You want to make sure that it is at unity gain or above. It doesn't need to be massively high, but where you want to avoid is where when you kick it on and your signal drops a little bit, that's when it starts to sound bad and like a cheap toy. It sounds much better if you give your amp a bit of a boost, again, even if it's just a little bit. Now, one thing that people love to talk about with these old pedals, and there's, there's truth to it, but there's also a little, uh, I'll explain it. A lot of people say that in order to get a great tone out of this pedal, you need to run into an already overdriven or distorted amplifier. There's truth to that, but it's only part of the truth. Yes, you get the classic distortion sounds if you run into an already overdriven amplifier. You get that harder, getting closer to like a Marshall Brown sound if you go into an already overdriven amplifier. And you've already heard that a little bit, and we're gonna dive into that more in a second. However, I think this pedal still sounds really, really good if you go into a clean amp. 
it just doesn't give you that same sort of edgy, heavier distortion. It actually sounds almost more like an overdrive hybrid I'm on the hard clipping end of an overdrive as opposed to that smoother overdrive sound, but there's a lot less gain if you go into a clean amp. Again, I still think it's a great tone. In fact, I really like this with the distortion back going into a clean amp with the Stratocaster. It gives me like one of the strattiest tones I've ever heard. It just really emphasizes the Strat pickups and it just sounds really great. That's not what most people would think of when they think of a pedal like this, but it's a usable application. With a humbucking guitar, or if you turn the tone way back, what you get is you get kind of a, again, it's a softer sound than if you're going into an overdriven amplifier, but it still works. It still sounds good. And I think if you keep that tone back and you boost the amp a little bit with it, there are just a lot of really cool usable tones from a DS1 that you can get. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dive back in and hear these tones that I'm talking about. We're going to start with something kind of similar to what we were doing at the beginning there. I'm going to start with the SG going into the amp overdriven and then do it again with the amp clean on the same setting so that you can hear how much of a difference it makes when you go into an overdriven amp versus a clean amp. Character of the pedal sounds the same, but the delivery is very different. Now today I'm going into the Supro Royale, and I do want to mention that the Supro Royale, it, it is a great amp. It's not an overly bright amp. There's not a lot of harsh high frequencies in it. No ice pickiness, nothing like that. So when you're talking about the tone being back, and you'll hear, it's still pretty bright and present. And again, even though you're hearing it solo, it's not the brightest amp in the world. So it's a kind of a good representation of what this can do when you turn the tone back. So we're going into the Supro Royale. First, you're going to hear it overdriven with the SG and then clean with the SG. And then we're going to go through a few different tones, including a really cool bluesy tone with a Stratocaster where I turned the tone almost all the way off. Not quite. It's like I turned it all the way off and it was just a little too much. So then I kind of just pulled it back up a little bit. And that got me a, a really kind of cool, silky, smoother blues overdrive tone. So let's hear a bunch of the tones that this can do. Let us know in the comments. And please understand, this is a YouTube video. So I get there are a lot of you out there who like this pedal, but I gotta title it a certain way in order to get people to watch it. Welcome to the internet. This is how things work. Anyway, I know there are a lot of people out here who love this pedal, but there are a lot of people who hate it, who think it's cheap, who think it's a throwaway pedal. I am here to say this is not a throwaway pedal. I'm not gonna say it's the best distortion that's on the market, it's certainly not but it's a lot better than it gets credit for. And I think one of the cool things about Boss is Boss is really one of the cornerstones of classic guitar effects, and it's nice to see them getting a little bit more respect than they had been for a while. So let us know what you think. Do you play the Boss DS1? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Please let us know your story in the comments. What other distortions do you use, and do you get similar results? I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.
Thank you.